My name is Logan Smith. Uh, as Richard said, I'm head of logistics for BNP Paribas Real Estate and the International Investment Group. We're in 36 countries, full service real estate firm. Um, and I want to thank you for, for giving me the opportunity to provide a little bit of context for this panel and also on the industry. In thinking about this, I think, frankly, the best piece of context I can provide on this panel is to point out that I've had the opportunity to listen to a lot of logistics panels, and I think this one is really quite special. You look at the four people who are going to come up here shortly, and you are not going to find four people who have been more of the pioneering group within this industry over the past 15 years. So I'm really excited to hear what they have to say. I'm going to keep it short. I'm going to keep it five to 10 minutes, and I'm going to focus on the past, the present, and the future very briefly for logistics real estate. Now, 15 years ago, turnover in this sector was about 1 billion euro a year, approximately. Prologis had just come to Europe. Manufacturers, distributors, 3PLs were just beginning to implement enterprise resource planning systems, ERP systems, that for the first time gave them visibility to their inventory across multiple locations. That was the past. You roll the clock forward 15 years to where we are now. Last year, turnover in this industry was around 30 billion euro, approximately. E-commerce constituted about, well, e-commerce is basically everywhere, but direct-to-consumer e-commerce constituted about 20% of new take-up. And logistics real estate is now about 11% of all commercial property. So clearly, this industry has grown an extraordinary amount in the past 15 years. So that is the past and the present, and that is the easy bit, because the future is the much more difficult piece to predict. We don't know exactly where we're going to be in 15 years. However, we can make some guesses. We do have enough information available to put some chips on the table, to think about what we might see over the next 15 years, five years, 10 years. It's difficult to say exactly. So what are some of these projections, some of these guesses? Firstly, I think we're all fairly confident that it is going to continue to grow. The growth that we have seen over the past few years has not stopped and it does not seem likely to. There's a couple of reasons why. Firstly, warehouse stock in Europe, modern warehouse stock in Europe remains only about one third of the level in North America. Prologis had a study that indicated that for every euro, pound, dollar spent in e-commerce, that requires about three times more warehouse space than that comparable volume of sales via traditional retail channels. The reason is for additional mezzanine, additional loading, additional truck cores, additional people working in the buildings. It seems fairly sensible once you think about it. Now, there's another statistic that suggests that of total retail spend in Europe, it's about 5 to 10 percent. So 5 to 10 percent, on average, of what Europe buys is online. This figure, according to Gartner, is expected to plateau around the mid-teens, around 20% over the next medium term. And if you imagine two to three times more e-commerce than we currently have, all of which requires three times more warehouse space, implicitly, you could argue that we're somewhere between six to nine times underserved for e-commerce space. Now, I think that this figure is probably an exaggeration. That's probably not the right number, but it's meant to illustrate the range in the order of magnitude of the change that may still be yet to come in this space. So you put it all together and you look at where tenants have been looking for space over the last few years, clearly there's more demand coming. But to take a step back though, it's not necessarily all going to be roses and sunshine. It's not necessarily going to be perfect and all of this does come with a catch. If you think about it in a very large way, it was e-commerce that it was technology that created this opportunity over the past 15 years. Technology is continuing to change. It's very, very difficult to say precisely what these changes are going to be 15 years from now. But again, we can make some guesses. 
If you look at some of the technologies that are out there, such as, for example, 3D printing, driverless cars, drones, Internet of Things. The, the prior panel, was any, did anyone see the prior panel? I'd never seen this before, but it was a full panel on underground urban logistics from the Fraunhofer Institute, who knows quite well what they're doing in Germany and Switzerland. It was fascinating. But you could add that to the list of technologies that could potentially impact the supply chain over the medium term. Now, it's important as people who are focused in this sector in this room that we understand these. We can't know for sure what these changes will be, but again, we can take guesses. Just as with any other underwriting assumption for real estate, we can guess. At BNP, we're developing a tool, for example, a tool set that basically tries to estimate what we think are some factors of buildings that will be well-suited for next generation e-commerce space. Will we be perfect at it? Absolutely not. But the goal is to get ahead of the curve and continue to do what we've all been doing for the last 15 years, which is get ahead of e-commerce and understanding how the movement of goods throughout the economy will change how people use warehouse space. So that's my guess as to what the future might bring. It's a lot easier to estimate what the past and the present have been, for sure. And I look forward to, to, to continuing to refine these assumptions as we go along. But I can tell you, having had the opportunity to work with some really good companies and some really good people in this space, I can tell you that right now, for the past 15 to 18 years that I've been doing this, is far and away the most exciting time. So with that, I'm delighted to turn it over to the panel and hear what they have to say. Thanks a lot. Thank you.